Welcome back to Shooting It Straight with your old pal, Rudy. Yes, once again, we are here with one of the true legends in professional wrestling. And when I say this, I don't take it lightly when I say a legend. Here's a guy who has been around the world many, many a times, who has wrestled in some of the major promotions in the United States and once again, globally. And he happens to be right here at International Big Time Wrestling. It gives me great pleasure and honor to introduce to you Congo Kong. Congo, how you doing, brother? Blessed and highly flavored. Yes, man, yes. So Congo, man, you and I, we go back a long ways. I mean, uh, uh, tell me, how long have you been wrestling? Well, uh, last October, I celebrated my 22nd year in wrestling. 22nd? Yes, sir. Wow, yes, sir. wow. Hell of a journey. Yeah. I'm looking for at least 10 more. How did you get involved in this wacky world of wrestling? Well, since I was a kid, I wanted to be a wrestler. And then uh, I just happened to, I uh, played for Saginaw Valley State University. And then uh, I came home for a summer and I saw a poster for a local company called Championship Wrestling of Michigan. You're probably familiar with Scott Easy. Sure. Um, yeah, and uh, they said down at the bottom, if you want to become a pro wrestler, uh, called this number and so at that point it was go back to hellhole college football that I did not enjoy being around or pursue my dream and so I chose my dream. So uh, who, who was the trainer? Your trainer? Started off with Scotty Z. Um, that lasted about a week. Him and the, the guy <laughs> who uh, who uh, uh, owned, the, owned the place had a falling out and so then he uh, hired in a guy by the name of Joe Ortega, uh, went by El Tijano. Um, and he's actually trained quite a few guys around the Michigan scene, uh, myself included, obviously, and in Holland, Michigan. And uh, so I finished up with him and, uh, yeah, kind of moved on from there. So do you remember your first match, who it was against and where it was at? And uh, first match I, I, I'm sure it was great. Yeah. Ain't they all the well, first ones? <laughs> my first one, I was about a weekend and I knew how to do a, a, a lockup and a headlock. Oh, wow. And... Uh, I, like I said, I was fresh out of college football, and the guy's name was JT Freeze, um, if that brings back any memories, because that was ages ago. And uh, he, he wanted me to hit a spear. So me not knowing anything about wrestling and being fresh out of college football, in my mind, a spear was a form tackle. Sure. And so I lit his <laughs> up. <laughs> and I wasn't supposed to win the match, so I uh, didn't know what to do. I was kind of freaking out after I hit him, because he was legit couldn't breathe and i'm yeah. like uh <laughs> looking around about freaking out losing my losing my <laughs> but you know hey we we, we survived and recovered and, right you right. know you have a, a bunch of rookies out there working together sure you know sure. the stuff is going to look all kinds of kooky like if when i whenever I, I come across it i'm like what the hell was i thinking but i didn't know <laughs> anybody you know and this is when you were wrestling under the name uh osiris, osiris? Yes, yeah sir. okay yes, sir. how long did you uh, have that persona uh, I would say for, well, I still have it, actually. I'm, I'm doing a show next weekend. No way! Yeah. Oh, wow. Bringing it back. Uh, for the last couple of years, he's been uh, retired, I guess. Um, so really, like, I would, I would switch back and forth, you know, when I, when I didn't have a weekend where Kong was booked. Because Kong, I could charge X amount of dollars for, you know. Sure. I would still make sure I get work in as Osiris and still, you know, make okay, you know. Sure. Um, and, you know been in the middle of a pandemic guys are like hey uh here's the problem we don't have any fans so our budget and i was like yeah i'm not paying my face so i tell you what i'll just be osiris <laughs> right still right. not taking any bumps either so <laughs> <laughs> you take bumps <laughs> yeah, you know, on there, huh? on case. okay fast forwarding uh, uh to your time in uh impact wrestling it's no secret that you were one of the top stars there let me ask you, what, what transpired there? Why isn't Congo Kong still kicking at TNA? Well, I'm glad you asked. Not really. But uh, um, <laughs> we're just shooting it straight. That's yeah, all we're no, doing. Honestly, I think it was just um, a matter of, you know, uh, the leadership changing. And then the new leadership really just not knowing how to push a monster, you know? Yeah. Uh, you can build me up, feed me to your top guy, you know, do whatever with the top guy, but then you have to build me back up. Absolutely. You can't just feed me the guy after guy after guy without getting any more steam Absolutely. behind me, you know? Yeah. 
And so... Oh, that's what they did for years with uh, Abyss. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. And, and even though, excuse me, my Monsters Ball match with Abyss still has one of the highest viewed, uh, um, well, view counts, I should sure. say, on YouTube. Sure. You know, it, it still didn't mean anything and it wasn't enough for them to continue and do anything out of it. So, right. uh, I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like it's, it's like a new toy of the week type thing. And so they bring these guys in and they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this and this and this. And then they don't do anything with yeah. it. And then yeah. it's like on to the next guy. And they never really give anybody a chance to develop right. and become that top star. Uh, part of that problem is ex-Fed guys, ex-WWE guys. They'll bring them in and, uh, you know, they're automatically sitting up here. And then none of the, the homegrown talent right. can ever touch them. Right. And I think that's bad. That's horrible for business. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah there's yeah. no reason that a mid-carder should be on top of your show all the time. Right. You know, if you're, if you're bringing this guy in, he should be getting your guys over. Yeah, you you, know? absolutely. And so I feel like, um, you know, just I guess maybe my style wasn't the same. And I've asked. I've asked, hey, what can I do different? What do you want me to do? You want me, you want me to juice up? You want me to, to, to come up with storylines for you? Here, here's 10 storylines for you. Uh, do you want me to change my style? Do you want me to do that fast paced slap your thighs <laughs> or, you know, what, what would you like me right, to do, right, you know, in right. order to stay here? But right. they kept telling me, well, we, we really can't think of anything for you. And I'm thinking six foot six, <laughs> 350 pound monster. I feel like the story probably writes itself. You just are choosing to not do anything with me. And I mean, if so, that's the case, but be honest with me. Right. And I felt like I never got a straightforward answer. Right. You know, and right. so it that's kinda, not fair. Yeah. It kinda, for, for a guy who's given a lot to a company. Yeah. I mean, you gave your heart and soul to yeah, the company. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, it, it, it had they done that, then I'd have been perfectly cool with whatever they told me and been been able to be on my way. Right. But because they, so to speak, jerked me around, you know what I mean? I died. It's, it's, it's left a sour taste in my mouth, and I don't feel like, you know, if they ever did call me back, like it wouldn't be an automatic, yeah, I'll come back. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like I, I, I would have a list of demands. All right, you got to do this, and you got to do this, and this needs to be sure. in my contract, and I need this much money, and you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's I don't know, I don't, I don't, I feel like I've given them, like you said, I've given them, yeah. you know, what I had to offer, what they, uh, decided to do with it was on them. Right. And whether right. or not they dropped the ball, you know, if I was a flash in the pan, okay, cool. Let me know I'm a flash in the pan. Right, right. And I can move on. But. Exactly, exactly. Let's talk about uh, happier times. Let's talk about JCW. Hell yeah. Tell us about your first experiences at JCW. What was that like? Um, let's talk about your first gathering. <laughs> do you remember it? <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember uh, I wrestled Rhino. Um, and I remember uh, Kevin Gill being in the back and uh, he comes up to me. He's like, yeah, I want you up. Uh, I want you I want you to take a gore and then kick out of the gore. And then I want you to take another one later on in the match and kick out of it, too. And then you're going to choke slam him and finish him. And I said, did you tell him that? Because I, I was like, have you seen Rhino? Right. Like his legs are as big as my waist, bro. Come right, on. Right. No. Right. And so, uh, you know, Rhino, Rhino being Rhino, the professional that he is, he, uh, you know, he, he, he made it work in a way that it made sense and still was able to get um, the point across what we were trying to get across. And, yeah. um, you know, it was it, it, aside from, you know, seeing the, the naked fat chicks and, <laughs> you know, discovering what the drug bridge was and. Uh, not for myself. I, I stumbled upon the drug bridge and I was like, whoa, all right. When they said drug bridge, they meant drug bridge. Like, yeah, right. You have an array of stuff. And then, you know, hearing that somebody drowned that year. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, what was it? What's the lake? The name of the lake? Uh, uh, lake Hepatitis. See? <laughs> yeah. People swimming in that. No, I'm right. good, bro. I'm good. No, it was, a, it was a different kind of experience uh, outside of wrestling. The wrestling was fun. Right. Um, the Juggalos loved you. Yeah. They yeah, really did. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, well, they, they pelted me with stuff. Well, the first couple well that's, years, that's how they show their love. <laughs> <laughs> they still support you even now on yes, the independent circuit. Even now, circuit, even now. You know? yeah. They, I, I, I got a message the other day uh, after appearing on uh, Juggalo Night Court, you know, uh -huh. guy, and he's like, man, I enjoyed your stuff on there. 
uh, you know, it's awesome following you through the through the years and blah blah blah. And I'm like, you know, I remember when you motherfuckers used to, <laughs> <laughs> used to throw at me. But no, I I uh, I'm absolutely grateful to the clown, to the clowns because without them, Congo Kong never would have happened. Right. And it took uh, a little while for me to get used to and get over because I never wanted to be what you would consider a stereotypical black character. Right. Even though that might not have been their uh, their goal. And right. Then, you know, it's still right. something I always wanted to shy away from. Sure. Um, and then I also didn't want to be a big, dumb savage, you know, like right. just like being in the ring, having the, 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 the honor to be in the ring with a guy like Kamala um, and hear like the things that he would do or see the things he would do and how he would, you know, call matches and the, his mannerisms and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, kind of it worked for him right but for me i i didn't want to be a big dumb savage right you know i, right, I looked right. at guys like ultimate warrior ultimate warrior was a savage yeah you know but he, he could talk i right. like the aspect of not talking because then there's no chance for me to put my foot in my mouth well there you go man. <laughs> but so here know, we are <laughs> <laughs> right so there we go and and uh um you know being uh, the warrior you know he could he was he was intelligent he spoke intelligently so if he was intelligent then why couldn't i wrestle intelligent yeah you yeah. know what i mean uh, yeah. yeah we could wrestle lions and tigers and bears in the jungle or are there bears in the jungle I don't uh, know. there could be there could be right uh, i'm sure there's big hairy dudes in the jungle so they could be considered bears whatever sure um and uh yeah i i i uh i didn't want to do it but i eventually you, you, know, you, yeah, you mellowed I, up. I to got it. into it, and, sure. and I, I was like, "You, you owned know, it. If I was going to do it, I'm going to make it mine. I'm right. going to make the best out of this situation that I can." Mm -hmm. And and Congo um, really took you around the world. It did. You my know? first, my first ever airplane ride was well with the clowns, um, but you know, it was to uh, BFE New Mexico where you smelled the meth in the air, <laughs> and uh, there's ten year olds in the crowd flipping me off, and <laughs> cussing me out, and uh, hey, it was whatever. Right. I got pelted with all kinds right. of drinks and Fago and all kinds of stuff, but it was a blast and I was glad I was able to do it. Sure, absolutely. So um, your time at International Big Time Wrestling, let's, uh, let's talk about that, you're here now. Yeah. yeah. How, how, how do you feel about uh, uh, being with uh, Kadeem Mohammed and uh, the nation? And, and once again, it's it's not a knock on the nation of Islam at all, and and right. I, I really want to let people know that that we love and we respect the nation, you know. Um, so when some people take it as you know we're trying to disrespect, I don't think we are, and I you know, and obviously you're uh, um, working the the angle, if yeah. you will, yeah. and so yeah, I don't think that you find it offensive, right? Um. I look at it as, you know, you look at the movie Malcolm X with Denzel Washington in, in it, and how many of those people are actually Muslim? Sure. You know what I mean? They're in there, they're portraying characters. Right. Um, now, there are certain things I will not do. You know, sure, but sure. I don't believe that we are at that point. You know? Right. And, and uh, I like, you know, being with um, Kadeem. Yeah. Um, I feel like, uh, He's you guys little, really gel together, man. He's a little brother I mean, to me, yeah. and he does listen to me, you know, yeah. and, and me having TV experience, I can tell him, all right, do this, you know, and he'll listen, and he'll do it, yes. you know, and, and it's it's cool. Like, he he might uh, might flip <laughs> back a little bit, and I'll just, just put my giant <laughs> hand on his shoulder. <laughs> Calm down, kid. Right. All right. All right. And, right. you know, hey, it's, it's, it's good, that's man, it. and that's, that's what I love about wrestling is that, you have so many relationships and friendships that you develop through the years that people begin to trust you and you know they uh they invest themselves into what you are telling them sure. because you know that's really the payoff yeah they, is the relationship building yeah and they look at your experience and i've i've, I've always said you know if, if i take the knowledge that i've gathered from the guys that have come before me and i keep it how's this business going to go on Absolutely. You know, it's changed over the year. Yeah, absolutely. It's oh, changed. Yeah. The guys in it have changed a uh, whole different breed of people. You know, we used to fight. They go to the keyboard, you know, hey, whatever. Right. It is what it is. Right. But, you know, I still feel like there is 
knowledge for me to pass on that they can use that they need, you know, whether they choose to use it or not. That's not the point. Right. Because I'm not going to be judged at the end by God or Allah or whoever, whatever you call him. Right. By what they did or how they responded is going to be about what I do. Absolutely. What I put forth in this world. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, listen, um, we're at the point of the show right here where we do a little uh, head check, if you will. It's basically a name association. The first, the names that I give you, the first thing that comes to your mind, I would love to hear because we're just shooting it straight, brother. Yeah, man. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah. Ready? Yes. Jeff Jarrett. Great guy. I have no issues with Jeff. Jeff, Jeff put me on at Global Force um, and there is, yeah, no, no heat, no ill will, anything. I wish nothing but the best for him. I wish he would start up Global Force again, to be honest with you. Uh, DBA. Great guy. Uh, took a while for us to, to uh, uh, gel, but um, once we did, we, we are family. Yes, yes. MM3. Little punk ass kid. <laughs> <laughs> I love him to death. I'm looking at him though. So, so you know, Abyss. I put up with him. Abyss. Oh man, genuine guy. He's the reason I was able to get to Impact. He he uh, he said I deserved a shot, and he was gonna do whatever it took to make sure I had that shot. Yes, yes. Uh, Rudy Hill. Honest, straightforward, good dude. Always great to see. Well, we've been shooting it straight with the one and only Congo Kong. You'll be checking him out more right here on The Fix, as well as shooting it straight, and of course, on Amazon Prime. Once again, thank you, my friend. Thanks, bro. It's always a pleasure. Stay tuned. Attention, all small businesses and entrepreneurs. Are you ready to take your company to the next level? Here is your chance to advertise your business or products under the lights of international big time wrestling scene worldwide. For more information, call 313-675-3367. Let's take your company big time. Tune in next week for more international big time wrestling on The Fix. If you've enjoyed this video from RocksTV.com, make sure you follow Rocks TV on Facebook and YouTube. If it's underground, we're there.